clinging to life, a child is pulled from the rubble tonight as the desperate search for earthquake survivors goes on. The rescue of a child and a woman has kept a glimmer of hope alive tonight amid all the misery wrought by the earthquake in South Asia. Up to 30,000 are now feared dead, trapped in flattened buildings. In some towns and villages, a whole generation of children is lost. 700 children, complete building, go down the earth. Here, thousands of families are in mourning for missing relatives. And in other news, caught on camera, a shocking case of brutality to shame the New Orleans police. In Anglia news, two men have gone on trial for the murder of Havani Zamirian, who was shot, stabbed and set on fire in a field near Peterborough. Good evening. In the cities and in the countryside of the earthquake zone, they have been digging all day and into the night to find survivors or bury bodies. 30,000 are believed to be dead in Pakistan alone. Across huge areas, building after building has been reduced to piles of rubble. People are still trapped, nearly three days on. Three quarters of the buildings in the capital of Pakistan-controlled Kashmir, Muzaffarabad, have collapsed. The epicentre of the quake is in Balakot, where a school collapsed on top of the children. Bill Neely has been in Balakot today. We'll also be hearing from John Irvine reporting from Muzaffarabad. But first, Mark Austin is in the Pakistani capital Islamabad tonight with the rescue of that small child, the headline already. Mark, aid from around the world pouring in, but as we've just seen, it's one-to-one -one help that's really making the difference. Yes, well, it is, Alistair. It is a night of some considerable drama here behind me where the British rescue teams are still working and their work has really paid off. In the last couple of hours, this is what has happened. Uh, loud applause and cheering and calls of God is great as uh, two people were pulled from the rubble alive. The first, a young baby who the searchers uh, tell us uh, had apparently been crying. They'd heard the crying through the rubble. And then a little while later, a woman who British rescuers say is thought to be the baby's mother. Uh, quite extraordinary scenes tonight. Uh, a sign of hope on what has otherwise been uh, a day of utter despair. A day when the number of children who have died uh, has become all too clear. Our international editor, Bill Neely, has been to the town of Balakot and reports now on the lost children. From a deep hole in what was a school comes a small body, a little girl in her uniform. Nobody knows her name, but they take her away quickly because they have so many more to pull out, hundreds. <laughs> there is a terrible reason why so many mothers are crying here. They have all lost their children, some, all of them. They sent them to school with kisses. Within an hour and in an instant, whole classes were dead. The mountainside overlooking the small town of Balakot is the source of their pain. The school that was here is gone. The fathers wait but with little hope, 350 of their children are dead. They have no heavy lifting equipment. The bodies are trapped, and not just bodies. The rescuers have heard voices. So they dig very carefully, but more often than not, it is far, far too late. The whole town is in mourning. The bodies of its children crisscrossing the streets where they once played. Past the clock on a school wall, stopped at the very moment when their lives ended. The very epicentre of the earthquake was underneath this town, about six miles below this school. About half Balakot's children were killed. Many are still buried beneath this debris. Ten schools in all, nursery, primary and secondary, perhaps 700 children dead at least, but they're not 
really sure. The luckier parents hold their living children tightly, but a generation has been lost here. So today, with a final kiss, thousands left the destroyed town for a new life. So many past the landslides, but going where? Most towns are stricken and half the roads are blocked. They cleared a way through a tunnel to the nearest town, which is 20 miles away. But when we reached it, we found...